Yes. Okay. So, um, good afternoon, good evening, class. Um, sorry, we've had a rough time for the past few weeks now. Network glitch. Let me just put it that way. So today we are supposed to last that. We're supposed to treat cash book, I still treating cash books anyways. I said that we'll be able to, we need to like wrap it up and make it a very, make it short as possible, as much as possible. So we're doing cash book today. Like I said, cash is an asset, as you can all see in on the board, is an asset and is a current asset. So all the, at any point in time, we we'll all know that an asset has an asset as a debit balance. So anything increasing an asset, anything increasing it will be will be on the debit side. So anything, any increase, like I wrote it here, is already here. Any increase will be debited, and anything decreasing the cash book will be credited. So that's that for that. So and the cash book can we have. The, we have three types of cash book. We have the single color, we have the two color, and the three color cash books. Now, these three, in as much as you already know that your cash book has a debit balance, I'm trying to make this as brief as possible so we could, we could wrap things up on time before we run out of time. So, in as much as we know that if we have a, a column like this, Like this book. This is the post that anything coming to the cash book for you. So anything a present cash book in forms of when you're making sales, you are you are receiving cash. So when you say cash sales, you have your sales. Like this, so say two thousand era will increase your cash book. But when you are making expense, when you are making payment for expenses, you have your expenses like this. Say, for, for example, for five hundred era. So any sales coming into the any cash sales means we're having increase in cash because we're receiving cash. That's why we have it as a debit balance. But anything, any payment for expenses is reducing our, our cash. It can, be, it can be in form of, say, purchases. It could also be purchases. Say, for example, 1,000 Naira. So anything reducing your cash will always be on the credit side so the only thing basically you do on the cash book is be sure that okay are we receiving money or, or we're giving out cash so if you're receiving definitely you know it's a debit balance but if you are paying or you're giving out like joints you know this is definitely a credit balance so in a very short form this is how we close a cash book before i go into the types of cash book that they close knowing how to close a cash book is very very important because it goes a long way to tell you how you want to really go about it. So this is how it is. You you sum up your debits. Look, this one is just like a one way transaction. It doesn't really matter how many transactions is there. But when you have a long a long volume of transactions, you have your debit. You sum up all your debit regardless of what. When you sum up all your debits, you have here, we have 2,000 Naira, like this. Then on the, on, the, on the credit side, when we sum that up, we have 1,500 Naira. But when we have 1,500 Naira, 1,500 Naira does not equate 2,000 Naira. But please note at all time, when you're balancing your cash book, the both, both the debit and the credit side has to be the same in this form. Because without them, you cannot, without that, you cannot say your ledger account is totally balanced. Your debit and your credit must always be 
cake wall. What you just need to look out for is find the difference. Now, in this case, the difference will be your balance carried down. So here we have 500, we have 500 here and we have 1,000 here. Then we have, we have the total is one five, then we have 2,000 here right here. The difference between the two is your five, is 500 Naira. So when you sum up all this, we have 2,000. And you sum up all this, we have, we have 2,000. So note at all times, the difference between your debit, your credit side of the cash uh, or the cash book is your balance carried down. And at all times, it should always be a debit balance. Because by the time we'll be bringing this down, we have balance brought down of 500 Naira. So this is how we arrive at our debit balance for cash book. I hope we all understand what I was trying, what I'm trying to talk about here. So this is how we arrive at our debit balance for cash book. Because at all time, your debit balance has it has to be equal with what we have. Let me push this a bit upward so that we could all see for our. So your, your debit and your credit side has to be the same at all time. So you have your balance brought down, that's 500 Naira. So when you have all your expenses, everything reducing your cash on the credit side, and you compare it with what we have on the debit side, it can be equal at all times. Whatsoever balances it has to be, whatsoever, it, whatsoever difference it is, is your balance that will be carried forward in, order, in another accounting period. So when you have a credit balance, like when you have it like this, it means you have a debit balance in your, because whatsoever you're bringing down here, carrying down here, you have to finally bring it down here on the debit side which shows that your file your cash book is actually a debit balance so that's and that being said let's quickly rush into the differences between the columns of cash book because we have it as the same and we've already made it clear in the, at the beginning of these classes that we will try as much as possible to make things very simple so by the time we'll be going through your study your study text you will be able to like go through it and say oh wow this is why it is like this we are just trying to make you understand the logics the games the am um, i going to put it better like every the, the, the let me just say the logics behind um accounts generally that is not a rocket science it's as simple as anything just get the concept and be able to work with anything so let's go into the single column cash book yeah single column we all know single column cash book to be that a, a cash a typical cash book should have a proper this thing we have our dates and we have the description then the ref and the amounts so the reference, like what are you referencing? The description. So this is your normal cash book account. So in a situation whereby you are making sales, you know, we have, when we are making payments, we have references that says, okay, this is the deposit slips. This is the, your date your description, your reference. So reference generally, it makes reference to your type of payment. If you're receiving, if you're receiving a deposit slip, you are receiving payment in terms of a deposit slip and the like. So this will give you an opportunity to say, oh, uh, okay, this payment, this sales, take for example, say first of 0101, 2021, you made sales. So your reference will be SL of how much? 2000 Naira. So it's always like this. This is what a single column looks like. 
you are just looking at one naira column. The other thing is the same. So your date column, your date column, your the, your description, your reference. You're looking at the date here, description, reference, and the amount. It's just that your amount here under a single column cash book is just one. That's the only difference. Then if you are looking at a sing, a two column cash book in such instances, we have a situation whereby the column is, we have a two naira column. We have amount naira column, amount naira column. So in this case, we have one as cash, we have one as bank, and we have one as cash. Now recall, when we were doing our current assets, we have we have two types of we have two types of cash. We have cash at hand and cash in bank. So you cannot compare the two. It's not the same. You cannot say cash at bank, cash at cash in hand. In as such as it's cash. If it is cash for the business, no, it's not. It's not the same. This one is in bank. In this kind of instance, this one you have a you have to stretch this one because it is in the bank. But this one at hand is right in your hand, like you have it at hand. So you're receiving actual cash for this, but in this one is in the bank. You don't have actual cash for it. Sometimes you might need cash for these things. So sometimes when you are now making sales, you might decide to have your cash sales, which you have your balances here. Say for example, 2000, or they might say, your cash sales was made 1,000 era in the bank. And uh, we can, can say, okay, your cash sales was made 500 naira in cash and 1,005 made to the bank. So in this, in this instance, the both of them is still, is still, this is still, is in the bank and the other is in cash so you cannot compare the both as normal cash normal cash and normal cash transactions so that's why we have it here like okay we have the bank naira column and the cash naira column so take for example say on the third of January 2021, you have an expenses for a cash expenses of say 100 Naira, and you have a purchase still on the same day, a purchase you made payment for through the bank of say 1,000 Naira. So you can imagine in this case, there's nothing here, but it, and in this case, there's nothing here. So this is what a two column cash would look like because this one is in the bank and it has a whole lot. It's not within your custody, is your money though, but it's not within your custody. So you have so in when you're making when you're doing the balances for yeah. this type of transactions, you're looking at you're looking at what's the difference. This one is one five. Your debit balance is one five for the bank column and your credit balance. And then again, one important thing that happens a whole lot of time when it comes to your two column cash rule that usually turns out to be a special case is your contract entry. This is very important. Your contract entry is very important and it happens in situations whereby you have money in the bank and probably you needed to sort some funds, you needed to sort some things. So you need to withdraw cash. So in those kind of situation, you, you see the you see the narration like it's always come in the case in the in, in the form of um withdraw cash for business withdraw cash for business use. So the call, it always comes like withdraw cash for business 
use. Now, note one thing. When you're saying we do cash for business use or two cash from the two cash from the business to the bank, those situations are actually the contract entry we are talking about. The cash is not moving anywhere. It's just that it has to move from one point from one spot to the other. And no, there's a difference between you're withdrawing cash for business use and when you're withdrawing cash for personal use. Just get the English. The personal use part of it is where you're actually withdrawing, where you're doing drawings from the business. But when you're saying you're, you withdrew for, you withdrew cash for business use, is totally, is entirely different from that. So in this case, when you're saying withdrew cash for business, we do cash from the bank for business use. You can say we do cash for business use. Definitely know you're talking about you are looking at that cash from the bank to the cash account. So in those kinds of instances, you come in and say, take for example, on the 4th of January 2021, you withdrew. Who is giving who is receiving the cash now? The bank, who is receiving the cash, who is receiving it, the cash from where? From the bank. So there's the reference we carry C because it's a contra entry. So probably you're withdrawing, maybe say, take for example, 200 Naira. So cash is receiving 200 Naira from who? From the bank. That's why we have bank here. Why the amount is, why the amount column is written 200 Naira for cash. So when you come here, you will see, zero on the 4th of January, 2021, cash received, a bank gave cash how much? 200 Naira. So those are, the kind, those are the special scenarios we experience when it comes to, when it comes to two column, cash book. The exception here is always around the bank and the cash account because the cash can be, is within the control of the business, is within this business, is right in their hand. But when it comes to bank, then definitely everybody knows banking. You have to go to the banking hall, you have to contact your account officers and all of that to get your transactions done, to get your cash to get transactions made on your behalf. So those kind of scenario actually need us single out. Differentiate between the single cash, the single column cash rule and the two column cash rule. And the exceptions to these two is the fact that we have the cash and the bank and situations whereby we have a Entry, order. So when you're going to, we are trying to resolve and uh, to balance this off. This is how we balance off. You check the debit side. You find out that for the bank column, we have one five. And on the debit side for the bank column. And here we have, we have 1,200. So it apparently means our debit is more than our credit. There are other instances whereby the credit can be more than the debit, especially for bank. In those instances, we have a bank overdraft. Please don't mix it up. When you have your debit higher than your credit, it means you have a debit balance for your bank statement from your, for your, from your, on your bank account, which is normal, and which means you have money in your bank but when you have your credit more higher than your debit, it's still a balance, but it is not a balance in the sense that it's no longer an asset. An asset will always carry a debit balance. But if even as much as it is no longer an asset, it becomes a liability because at the time you'll be having a credit balance, your, your debit, your credit side is more than your debit side. You'll be having a credit balance, which means you have a liability. So the same thing goes, the, the, the same does not really apply to cash because there's no way you can spend more than what you already have. Definitely there's your money, your money is hanging somewhere. You cannot come and tell your, you cannot come and say you have you have 700 there at hand and you end up spending 800 there. No, definitely you have to you have to recognize liability for the excess. 
you can't bring such transactions into the cash book. But for banks, in as much as they deal with cash, it's very possible that they have higher, you have a higher expenses in your bank than what you have actually received. It means there's a borrowing in the form of bank over draft. But the difference between the two, we need to check the difference between the two. So this one, this your bank account here is 1,500 and this one is 700 naira. So it's expected you have the same balance on both sides, 700 naira and 1,500 naira. So the difference between the two, if you, if you, check, if you check this out, you find out that this is 100 Naira and this is 700. So the difference between the two, the two sides is what yours is 600 Naira. I actually choose to use a very simple example. So we won't be going back and forth on how we want to go about this whole thing. So this is 600 Naira. So this is 600 Naira. So here is 1,200. On the debit side, we have 1,005. The difference is 300 Naira. So your balance carried down. So this one is your balance carried down. So your balance brought down would be 300 Naira for your bank and 600 Naira for your asset, for your cash. So in this kind of situation, we can, we can say we have a debit balance for your cash. So please and please, as much as possible, try to differentiate when you're dealing with a cash transaction and the bank transaction. Then note your contra entry, which is very, very important. Here, you put C in front of this place, sorry. So this is very, very important to have your cash book balanced off. So like, like I said earlier, your debit side was, uh, your, when your debit side of the bank is more than the credit side, it shows that there is a, debit balance but when it is when the credit side is more than the debit side it more shows that there's a liability so you can no longer call that an asset but a typical liability that's when we realize we have a bank overdraft so in such situations you recognize them as a real current liability the same thing goes for cash the debit side of the cash has to be higher than the credit side of the cash and in no circumstances should you have a debit balance like the bank will always do because the bank has actually already borrowed your money. Nobody's borrowing your money if you have spent more than what you have at hand since you clear the liability somewhere else. And you have to recognize that separately. So that being said, then we go straight up into our three column cash books. So that would be a little bit longer than it. I'm trying to, as much as possible, to keep these illustrations very, very short. So for our three column cash book, uh, so for three column cash book, <laughs> it is to skip my mindset. Yeah. Um, 202. For three column cash book, you have your column period of into debit and credit on the other side. Then you spit out your you spit out your date column like this. So for the three column cash book, for the three column cash book has three three amount column. We have the description. We have the ref. We have 
the bank, the bank amount column, the cash amount column. Then we have a discount column. That's the difference. So the same goes for the credit side. We have the ref. That's for discounts. Uh, we have cash naira column. So these are the aspect of three column cash book. What makes it a three column cash book is this Naira column. Here it becomes three. For two column cash book is just two, which is bank and the cash column. But under the three column cash book, we have three of them. We have the discount, the cash column, and the and the bank column. Now to top this whole thing, we need to note that. What the discount does, we have two types of discount actually. We have the trade discount and we have emphasis like we have trade discount and the cash discount. This you get, you get this value at the point of negotiation. At negotiation, you get a trade discount. So you have this discount calculated, most especially when you are doing your sales day book or your purchases day book, which I presumed my other colleague has taken as explained mostly on. Then this cash code, this cash discount comes when after the whole sales thing has been going on and you're holding the person say 2000 era and somehow the person was like, you're, you're saying that the person was not really coming up with the, with the payment. So you decided, okay, let's have a situation naira. All these, the 200 naira was supposed to form part of your sales because we initially recognized it as sales. You've recognized the 2000 naira as sales. But as time goes on, you find out that the person was not coming up with the payment. So you decided to do some discount, a cash discount. Say, okay, bring 1,800 Naira and pay off my money so I could have uh, I could have my money paid in full. In those kind of situations, say for example, first August, first of January 2021, you have a discount. Okay, so in those kind of situations, since you are the one. They are supposed to have received the money. Those discounts are called discounts allowed. But for situations whereby you are supposed to pay off something, you are supposed to pay off money, and the person is giving you a discount, you call those situations discounts received. So for every discount you find on the debit side of the cash book, you, they are all discounts received. But for all the discounts you find on the credit side, discounts allowed. So get the difference between the two. One is discount received. That's when you are being given, you are enjoying a discount from payment you're supposed to make is called discount receive and it's as a debit balance. And so you'll be surprised that in your payment, will be receiving side. The same thing applies that when you're making, when you're receiving payments on this side, 
you'll be doing this count allowed on this other side because you already allowed the discount to get your payment me so if you are taking say for example like the case of it allowed for say 200 naira it doesn't matter whether it's from bank or cash what matters is the fact that who are doing a discount and whether it's you just have to allow it so here on the 1st of january 2021 you have a sales of say Two thousand uh, one thousand eight hundred. Sorry, hundred the discount for you. So, are we doing cash or bank? Let's say we are doing cash. We are doing bank. One thousand eight hundred naira because you are allowing a discount of two hundred naira. It's going to reduce. It's going to reduce what we initially have as you are supposed to receive from a debtor. Because usually it's not even sales. Sale. It's actually like cash received from debtor because when you don't have a debtor there's no way you can allow discounts if you're allowing discount at the point of sales it is not a cash discount it is a trade discount so you can't say the both are the same so the same goes for the fact that sometimes when you're now doing when you're paying cash pay cash to creditor. Take for example, you're supposed to make payment for 1,000 and the, you're allowed to pay 900 Naira in the bank. So in those kind of situations, you come to this other side and say you've received discount of how much? 100 Naira. That's discount receipt. So in those in these two situations, if we check these two, two situations very well, you notice that when you're making payments, when you're receiving cash from a debtor here, and you're allowing a discount, your discount are what you're allowing is actually on this on the credit side. It's not because the debtor is actually you are receiving money from the debtor, so the discount has to be side by side by it. No, it is not though. You cannot put the two hundred naira here. Because whatever amount you are putting on this call will be something you are enjoying. It's not something you are allowed. You are the one that is supposed to collect money from the, from a debtor, from a debtor. And at the end of the day, you're collecting less than what you're what you're entitled to. So it means you are receiving whatsoever amount you are receiving here. But on the credit side, you have to allow two hundred naira. Same goes to the fact that the same the same applies to situations where you are supposed to pay a creditor and you're paying the creditor instead of 1,000 naira, paying the creditor 900 naira. So it doesn't mean that you have to come here and write 100 naira under the column, under the discount column. No, because on this side, you are allowing, here you are receiving. It was you that was, that was receiving discount. So you come back here and recognize the fact that you have been, you have been with, is like a cash account and what we have here is 100 naira. so by the time you'll be doing your trading profit and loss account you understand better why those things are like that because when you are doing your trading profit and loss account discount received is classified under order income so discount received received is order income you have it as other income. But when you're allowing a discount, discount allowed is classified under expenses. The only unique thing about three column cash book is the discount column. 
And I tell you, you just self balance. You should just balance. You just sum everything and leave it like that. You don't have to look for the, the difference between the debit and the credit to find balance brought forward. No. The only place you look for the difference between the debit and the credit is your, is your uh, bank and cash only. This one, you just sum everything and leave it that way. So when you get your trading profit and loss account, you pick the one for discount receive. I add it under after your gross income. You put it under income, discount receive. Then you put under naira. When you get your expenses, you pick the 200 naira and say expenses, discount allowed 200 naira. That's how the thing works. It's not like that one that you'll be coming here to say the difference between the bank column. Yes, we know the difference between the bank column and the, is 1,000 So apparently this one too has to be 1,800. But the difference between the bank here, uh, 900 and uh, 1,000 is what? Is 900 naira. So you close everything like this. You say balance, carry down, 900 naira. And you come down here and say, balance brought down. And you say 900 naira. You can see that I only did that for bank column and cash column. You don't balance of discount column. Discount column and discount column for debit and credit is different. Once you have that balance, you're taking it straight up into your balance, into your trading profit and loss account. You don't balance it off against each other. It doesn't concern anybody. It concerns the fact that this is what you're enjoying and this is what you're giving out. That's what concerns us here. But yeah, for uh, uh, the bank and the cash column, it's necessary we have the balances for debit and the credit net of it is each other so and we have the balance whatsoever is going to be carried down but if it's a debit balance you would have known your debit side will be higher but if it is a credit balance your credit side will be higher just know that it's very 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 simple and very straightforward you just have to get what it is and what you're supposed to be doing is that straightforward so on that note I've been considered all of that. It still doesn't apply that we don't have a, a contract entry. Contract entry still applies like it is in the three column cash book. In, in the bank and the cash column still applies like your two, uh, sorry, your a contract entry still applies in your, like it is in your two column cash book. The only difference you have in your two column cash book and the three column cash book is your discount column. And I said, and I still quote, that every debit, every debit discount is discount received. Discount you enjoy from payment you are supposed to have been made in full. But every discount on the credit side are discount allowed that were supposed to have been received in full from debtors. So in those kind of situations where the credit discount is an expense, Please, like I quoted down here, and for every discount, for every discount on the debit side, the discount received that is recognized as a that as other income because you're not really planning for it; it just came. So, um, having said all of this, I think we will not. I would just love students to see how they can solve one or two questions on cash book generally and see how you can easily move from move from cash book to other aspect of the account considering the fact that YAC and GC is fast approaching and we need students to be to be on top of everything they are doing. So in the on, in the interim I would I like I already said I'll still I'll still I'll quickly run through the cash and the trade discount. So like I said, trade discount. Okay, every other thing for three column cash book is just like any other thing else. When I started this lecture, this lesson, I showed us how we can balance the debit and the credit. And considering the board and the size and every other thing, and it's, it's not a full classroom, we have to make it as simple as possible. So having every other thing I've said in mind, 
and the fact that the only difference between the single column and, and the, sec, the double column and the three column cash book is the discount aspect. And considering the fact that the difference between the single column and the double column is the bank and the, the cash column. For the single column is just one, one column, but for this double column is the bank and the cash column. So having shown you how we can balance up, I think we should quickly wrap up through the uh, wrap up trade discount and the cash discount. I already, like I already said, like your cash, this your trade discount is related to your invoices. It's always your invoices. So let me quickly run through that before we run out of time. So your trade payables, uh, your trade discounts. I hope this is not really that bad. And your cash discounts. So your trade discounts is related mostly to what? Invoices. Let's put it like this and always have it as that. It's always related to invoices. Why your cash discount is always related to what? Payment. So you can think of any other thing outside this. Any other thing, just put it together. Any other thing. When we say invoices, it means you are going to sell on credit on a good day. All you just have to do is not consider. Oh, like Madam Labaja, since you are buying, take for example, this is how our sales day books look like. We already have our sales day book like this. I hope my board is clear. So we have the date, we have the description, and we have the amount. So here we have one, one carton of, one carton of biscuits. Can you say one times one, which is 500 naira? At 5% discount. So 5% discount of that is 25 naira, if I'm right. Uh, okay, it's 25 naira. So you less this from this, you have 475 naira. So this discount here, you're looking at, this discount is what we, you know, and you know very well that this balance will be transferred to, that's why we're always having transfer, this one, all my markers, transfer to sales account. So you have 475. So you find out that at this point, when you're making payment, when this vendor is buying one carton of biscuit at 500 naira, then you are allowing 5% discount. It is called your trade discount because, because it is not cash. It is called your trade discount. So at the point where this person is now supposed to make payments, and the person is still making payment for say uh, 470. So by the time you have your sales account like this, transfer to sales account. So you have, um, what is it called? Like 475 here. And you have your debtor like this. This is your sales account. Then at the same time, you create your debtor account. You have sales at 475. So instead of the person paying, um, what is it called? Paying 475, the person decided to pay 470 as cash sales, as cash. So you, you have, it means you've allowed the discount of additional 500 or five naira which is discount allowed. So this discount is the cash discount. This one is the cash. 
this is your cash discount. And this discount here is your trade discount. Here, like this way, you can see the difference between the two. And there's a big difference between when you're, when you're dealing with your discount, your trade discount, and your cash discount. And in any, in, in, in any circumstance, any situation in your life, you to find yourself, you should be able to differentiate between the two. This is your cash discount at any point in time. And it, uh, it's, it's can be, it can be mixed up with your trade discount. Trade discount happens at the point where you're supposed to get an invoice. So at that point, it's not really recognized as part of as, as a cash discount because it's not even in the book. They are still considering bringing such transactions into the book. So nobody, nobody will sit or wake up and conclude, oh, this is a um, clinical. Oh, yeah, let's, let's assume no. In as much as it, it, none of these figures is in the books, it is tra strictly trade discount, which ends here. It started here and it ends here. Nobody will go back to anywhere and be picking yeah, how many trade discounted. If you want to do that, well, that one is an analysis for another for another set of people. It is not an analysis for an accountant. In as much as this value has not been recognized anywhere in the books, it stays here. It remains here. But the moment it, it goes into our sales account that we recognize that this is what we made payment for, and we are expecting payment. This is what we sold that we are expecting payment for. At that point in time, it becomes an issue because regardless of how it is, you need to start thinking, oh, how am I going to get my money now? And by the time you're now saying, okay, bring this, don't consider this. You cannot just grab that person and assume you collected for 75 Naira where you received 470. So you have to be really clear about what you are doing Per time. So, in a nutshell, to call this all is your hub, to call this all, all um, thing hub. Simply put, trade discount is on your, we always find your trade discount on your invoices and your cash discount on payments. So, it's as simple as that. So, it will be deducted after sales have been made or at the point okay. where payments will be received and it appears in your cash book this one you always find it in your cash book because it's a go and it stands beyond just your cash book because at the end of the day, you have to recognize whatsoever you're allowed and whatsoever you're receiving as discount in your trading, profit, and loss account. So to this end, I guess we have to end this class. I see we are not running out of time, but at the same time, we still need to end the class. Thank you so much. And subscribe to our